you know, I was just sitting here thinking about some things, listening to some messages on my phone while I'm working. I'm just taking a little break. But, you know, I was just sitting here thinking, you know, many times people want to, you know, talk about their claiming the blessings and promises of God and they're standing on God's Word and they're just believing God for His blessings and His promises. But many times they're not, they're not living and walking in those promises. And the promises of God many times are conditional. You know, and he says all through Scripture many times, if you do this, I'll do this. And they're not living according to the conditions of those promises. You know, like Psalms 91 says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And, you know, they try to claim the blessings and promises of Psalms 91. But Psalms 91 says, He that dwells. And the problem is many times we're not dwelling in the secret place. We don't even spend time in the secret place. You know, and we go to church and we want to hear about all these good candy-coated messages the good, about the goodness of God and the blessings of God and, the, and prosperity of God and all these things. You know, and they don't want to hear about sin and they don't want to hear anything that's going to make them feel convicted. You know, and Paul said, in the last days, men will not endure sound doctrine. You know, and... They wonder why they're not receiving from God when their life is not lining up with the Word of God. You know, the Ten Commandments, they don't want to hear messages about the Ten Commandments. The average person don't even know what the Ten Commandments are, let alone live according to them. You know, and he says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet. Thou, you know, and um, Jesus goes on in the New Testament. He says, if you even look at somebody to lust after them, we've committed adultery in your heart already. You know, and we people, I hear people, I work construction, and I hear people say, it's all right, as long as I don't touch, I can look, but I don't touch. But Jesus said, if you look at a woman, if you just look at somebody and lust after them, you've committed adultery with them in your heart already. You know, and they don't want to think about that stuff. You know, marry people. You're married and you're looking at somebody, and you're, you've developed a relationship with somebody, you know, and that thing has turned, you've not committed any kind of sin or anything, but you've developed strong, strong ties, emotional ties to that person. And there's somebody, they're not even your spouse, but you've developed strong ties with that person. You know, I mean, that's not right. And they've developed... Uh, many times they've come, you know, they've coveted that person, and you're in desire, wish they could be with that person, and instead of their own spouse, and that's covetousness. That's adultery in your heart. You've committed emotional adultery. You know, and there's things like this going on. They don't hear it in the church, and the Bible talks about how will men believe except they hear, and how will they hear unless somebody tells them. You know. But people, all they're not telling them. They're not telling them about the sin in their life. And they talk about all the blessings and prosperity and promises of God, but they don't tell them about the conditions. And they're not living right. There's sin in their life. Jeremiah said, your sins have separated you from your God. And, and you want to claim the promises of God, but you're not living according to the promises. You can't claim the promises and expect to receive the promises when you're not living according to the promises. And I just wanted to throw that out there. I've just been thinking about it all day and meditating on it. You know, and I just want to just tell you, just be encouraged, be blessed. God loves you. I love you. You know, don't be feel convicted. I mean, don't feel condemned. Romans says, there is therefore now no condemnation. You know, God doesn't want to condemn you. He wants to save you. He wants to bless you and love you. So just be blessed. Be encouraged. You know, the grace of God is there for you to empower you to overcome so that you can live according to those promises and receive those promises. Be blessed.